so Lord, that we would receive your word and apply it to our lives, God. And Lord, I pray that you just allow us to leave differently, God, than how we came in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Opportunity, you can go to our website and sign up for our e bulletin, and it will get to you every Friday or Saturday or so. Hopefully, not after the fact, but you will get one and you'll be in line every you want a week bulletin? for that. So. Sure. Isn't God good? All the time. Amen. He deserves glory and honor and praise every day. He is our Savior and Good Shepherd, and He's faithful. At the top of your bulletin, this is dear to my heart. Um, those of you that have been here for a while, you know that uh, Craig Huey comes out every year and shares with us on the political <clears throat> policies and events that are going on, voting time. Uh, him and his wife just suffered a, not a loss, but pretty close. Their son, Corey, was shot five times oh by a gang oh members my. trying to rob him. So he pulled through, but he's recovering, so we would covet your prayers. So we want to keep praying, praying for his son and for the family during this time. So um, there is, if you're on Facebook or you're hooked up with him, we are asking for donations on GoFundMe. So you might want to just look Craig up Huey, and I'm sure that it's there if you want to help uh, offset some of the costs for that. Men's study will be resuming April 23rd. We just finished a series. Omar will be starting a theme called Created in the Image of God, His Amen. Purpose for Humanity, taken from Genesis 1, 27. So guys, hope to see you. It was really awesome, yes. this last series, so if you can make it out on Monday nights at 7 p.m. April 20th is Taco Night, so we'll have a taco guy here just to create fellowship within the body of Christ. So if you're not doing anything on Friday night, come out from 4 to 8 p.m. anytime and have fellowship with the brethren and break bread. 
break tacos with one another as we do out here in this community. And they're great tacos, by the way. So, discipleship leadership class will be the 22nd of April at 12 p.m. here at the church. So those of you that are in discipleship class, but also in ministry, uh, please join us April 22nd. Now, same day, but following the service, all the ladies are going to gather together to talk about the retreat briefly about what you're going to take, uh, what not to take, you know, who you're going to bunk with, who's driving, carpooling, all of those good things. So um, I believe we still have five five uh, beds available. So if you're interested, we need time. I'm trying to see here, what's the theme? Who can find a complete woman? Well, I found one. <laughs> And boy, she's complete. <clears throat> so, you can see Pat afterwards and ask one of the ushers and they'll direct you to Pat. While well, Rudy will be May 4th at 11.30 a.m. Um, then my complete woman has asked me to announce this. We are gathering up for the annual Sky Country Yard Sale on Saturday, May 19th from 5.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. We'll have flyers for you after church. It, Oh, it has Pastor Ruben's address and information. <laughs> we think differently, but we get the point across. Uh, on what to bring to the house and so forth. So all of you know that this is our annual Sky Country um, yard sale. And we don't just do it to sell things and, and, and raise money for our baptism, but we also do it to reach out to the community. And in fact, because we've been doing it for so many years now, uh, there are people in the community that go to our house specifically to eat and to fellowship and to see what's going on Amen. in our church. So uh, we need a lot of servants. Uh, we're hoping to have a taco guy out there on that day to help relieve some of the cooking that takes place in the morning. But um, you can bring your stuff to the house and you'll have the flyers out there the Thursday and Fridays and they'll set everything up. And then uh, Saturday morning, you need strong guys to help move everything into place. So if you're open for that day, we would appreciate that. All right, let's ask the ushers to come forward. We serve an awesome God, don't we? Yes, we do. And he is always faithful. He's always been faithful. I, I remember hearing a study. <laughs> I have so much history here with uh, Dr. Hawking. I remember hearing a study on tithing by him back in 1980, probably 9, 90. Just an in-depth study, and I thought, wow, I've got to do this. <laughs> I've got to do it, because when he spoke, I did. Uh, and so I started tithing, and um, I learned a lot of lessons uh, through that message and through the application. And God has always been faithful from that time to this very day. Provide for me and my family. I have 11 grandchildren, so he has provided a lot. So you can trust in him and have faith when you uh, give back to him what he has given to you, with a little bit of that anyway. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord. It's always an honor and privilege, and we do give hilariously, Lord, to you joyfully from the heart. Uh, truly, Father, to give to your work is, is such an honorable thing, Lord, and also a pleasing thing to see. People come to the Lord Jesus Christ for the first time, Lord. And we see that in this little church, Father. So many in our community. And we just pray that you continue to give us that opportunity by your grace. Lord. And so receive our offerings, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can I have these notes afterwards? Sure. <laughs> Wow, what an honor. Um, we've been here for 24 years, and to have Dr. Hawking come out and share for me is, is like really up here. But definitely God is first, you know, and we're not to have idols, you know, but God sends us servants, pillars in our community that, that are men that have studied the word, that are gifted beyond measure, anointed of God, and, and that's definitely Dr. David Hawking, and, and it's... A privilege for us to hear his messages. Let me just tell you a quick story. You have till 11 to, to teach her as much as time as you want. <laughs> but back in 87 when I got saved, um, two people that I listened to the most in the very beginning was, was um, Jay Vernon McGee and then it was David Hockey on Cave Right AM. 
because they only gave us AM radios in our trucks at that time. And then later on, it was uh, Walter Martin, you know, and, and then kind of expanded from there. But I remember him teaching one day in the winter time of 88. He was teaching on baptism. Now, let me let me build a story before before I get into that. I was born and raised in Catholicism, so I had no idea what Christianity was about. And I'm in my company truck. I get saved through a message by Greg Laurie on the Sermon on the Mount. I realized what a wretched sinner I was, and I deserved hell. And at that 30 seconds before he offered the hope, I knew that I was going to hell, and I was trying to figure out how I was going to live the rest of my life knowing that. And then the hope came, and I accepted Jesus Christ in my truck from a radio. A year later, he's teaching on baptism, and I'm like, baptism, I need to get baptized. Where do I go? What do I do? And I'm like, Lord, what do I do? I've got to get baptized, because Dave Hawkins says, if you haven't been baptized, you immediately need to get baptized. <laughs> and so I'm like, it's raining, so I get out of my truck, and I said, Lord, would you baptize me? And I said, baptize me, Lord, in the name of Jesus, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and I just got drenched. And that was my baptism. That was my baptism. So I have a lot of history, and he doesn't know about it. But, uh, with, with him, uh, of course, I did get baptized correctly afterwards through laying on the hands of the pastor. So I'm not too far in heresy. <laughs> so um, wow, I think everybody knows uh, Dr. David Hawking. So uh, I mean, I could go down the list, but I know you don't want me to. So let, let's just have him get up here and encourage us with the God of impossibilities. Well, he told me this was small. <laughs> and I told him we were the long and short of it all. <laughs> and then, that thing is really small. You were not kidding, were you? Yeah. <laughs> This is okay, amen? Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Where are my notes? <laughs> what? Do I have to turn it on? Yes. Oh. You probably turn it don't. On. Push the button. There you go. And wait for the green light. There it is. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Is there any difference? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, I want to get something straight. He did it again this morning. Pastor, I love you with all your heart, but there are no little churches. <laughs> I told you that on the phone, and here you did it this morning to these people. You said it was a little church. This is not a little church. There are only churches in the Bible. Amen. I don't care how big or small they are. It doesn't make any difference. These are the places where people can fellowship and hear God's word. Amen. And I want to talk to you about something that's a problem for all of us. Life is getting tough. Yes. Amen. You notice that? Mm -hmm. Our country has a culture now that's away from God, doesn't want anything to do with prayer or the Bible in any public Amen. place. And I've battled this for a long, long time. I can tell you that Donald Trump was right when he said, let's clean the swamp out in Washington, D.C. The trouble is, it's still a swamp. And there's only one thing that I want to thank the president for, and that is that they have a prayer meeting every day in his cabinet before they begin the day. Amen. And I know Mike Pence had something to do with that, but I want to thank the Lord for it. I don't care what you think about Donald Trump. I want the man on his knees praying. Amen. And by the way, uh, it was... Our good friend, Franklin Graham, the son of Billy Graham. Franklin is right now going across the U.S. in various cities to preach the Word of God and call people to repentance. Well, last uh, February, we had the annual uh, conference for radio broadcasters. It's a big conference, some 10,000 people. It was in the Sheraton in the Washington, D.C., they invited President Trump to say a word, and he did. And it was a nice little talk, and, you know, they all cheered and so forth. And then uh, Franklin Graham introduced himself to him, and he said, oh, I've always wanted to meet you. And Donald Trump said, you have? Huh. He said, well, I knew your father. He said, I know that. 
he said, but uh, I wanted to meet you. And let me walk you out to your car. I'm sure you have to go back. He said, no, I don't. I'm going to stay here all week. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're going to listen to all these messages? Yes, that's what I'm going to do. It went to Friday. On Friday, because I've been there <laughs> so many years, I know what they do on Friday. Everybody gets on their knees for prayer. And he thought for sure that, you know, they'd usher the president out. No. He told Franklin, he said, I'm not going. I'm anxiously looking forward to this day about prayer. They got on their knees, Franklin Graham beside him. He says, um, by the way, it's important that you make a personal decision in your heart about our Lord and Savior. You need to give your heart to the Lord. And um, <laughs> Franklin is, is fearless. And uh, he and I agree. There's one thing to pray for our president, that he'd clean his mouth up. Amen. 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 That would be good. Yeah. Be more presidential, or let's say, be more spiritual, too. Well, as you know, on Resurrection Sunday, our president gave what they are calling the most religious speech that any president in history has given. I heard it all. And it's worth hearing again. It's on the net. And you know, uh, our world is divided because culturally we're divided. There are people that just want total freedom to do whatever we want to. Well, that's not the freedom of God. No. Never has been. But that's where our country is. And we're having problems. And people are having problems. And I see it in church after church. I speak all over the place. I saw him last week. I was up in Redding, California, and I spoke at a place called the Little Country Church. There are no little churches. <laughs> well, that little country church I spoke at about 10 years ago, and they had about 40 people, like, like here. And today they have over 2,000. Wow. And people are coming to the Lord every week. Amen. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. But people need hope, and hope that is real. Yes. Not whistling in the dark and hoping something to be so. That's not our hope. Our hope is based on solid ground. My hope is built on nothing less than Yeshua's blood and righteousness. Yes. Well, I'm going to start. Uh, they're going to try to keep up with me back up there. Put it up. <laughs> I'm going to start by talking about the God of the impossible. The Bible says that nothing is impossible with God. Put up the next one. In Ephesians 3, 20 and 21, if you want to open your Bible, I don't know, that comes out kind of small there. But it says, now unto him that is what? What does it say? Able. Able. We're going to learn today how able God is to do anything in our lives. Amen. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Messiah Yeshua or Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end and all God's people said Amen. and in Matthew we read our Lord telling the disciples with men this is impossible but with God all things are possible I want to talk to you about the God who is able to do exceeding abundant. You know, I was preaching on Ephesians and mentioning in chapter 3 this passage, and a school teacher from Pennsylvania wrote me a nasty letter. And she said, I don't know what you think you were doing, but she said, there's too many adverbs in that sentence. <laughs> she said, I teach English, and I was offended. So I wrote her a letter back, and I said, it may be bad English, but it's great Greek. <laughs> God wanted all of us to understand. He is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think. Amen. I want to talk to you about that, and I hope this will be a great blessing. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, how thankful we are for your word. Thank you for this church that preaches your word. 
the Bible, the whole Bible, yes. nothing but the Bible. God bless the pastor and the staff here. I pray, Lord, that you will encourage them to believe that you are who you said you are. Yes, and there's nothing too hard for you. We thank you in the blessed name of our Amen. Lord Yeshua. Amen. 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 Now, <clears throat> next slide. Number one, if you want to take notes, I'll try to leave each point up there. Uh, he was able, according to the Bible, to cause an elderly, barren woman to birth a child. Do you know when the child came? Abraham was 100 years old, so he was no prize chicken. <laughs> but she was 90 and totally barren. And God said to Abraham, at this time next year, you're going to have a baby, a child. Wow. And you see in that picture, I love that picture, she was in the tent listening, and she started to laugh. <laughs> Put it up there again. Next one. But a year later, right on the nose, and matter of fact, it was nine months mm. exactly. Right on target. Mm. The woman is 90 has a baby. You believe that? There's a lot of people that don't believe it. In fact, because she laughed, they named the boy Isak, which in Hebrew means laughter. Every time you saw the kid, you cracked up laughing. <laughs> you know, how old's your dad? Oh, about 110. And your mom? Oh, 100. Well, can they come out and play? No, they can't walk. <laughs> I don't know what went on there, but you can only imagine, right? Put it up there in the scripture. I love this. Genesis 18. The Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? And here comes the answer. Is anything too hard for the Lord? No. Absolutely not. At the time appointed, right on target, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Mm. Amen. 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 And put it up there again. In Romans, we have a whole story about it. Here it says about Abraham, being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, <laughs> now dead, Smart old guy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. There's our promise, I tell you. But was strong in faith, giving glory to who? God. Yeah, not him. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And being fully persuaded that, listen carefully, what he had promised, he was what? Able, Able. Able yes. to perform. So that's the very first thing. And I know a lot of people hearing that story, well, they wind up laughing too. But there's nothing to laugh about. God's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Amen? Yes. I'm not 100 yet. But... Uh, and I'm not sure I want any more children or grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> At holiday time, they're running out of our ears. <laughs> but let's take a look at number two. Uh-oh, here we go. Put it up there. He was able to cause a virgin woman, had no husband, mm. never knew a man, a virgin woman to conceive a child. You don't think she might have had a question or two about that? <laughs> Amen. Put it up there. Yes, an angel came to Mary and said, you're going to have a baby. She also told her, she said, well, how can I, I I've never known anybody. Not necessary. The Holy Spirit will come on you and cause this birth to occur. Oh, and by the way, your cousin Elizabeth, who's been barren for 40 years, She's going to have a baby. And hers is coming six months before your one will be born. And that baby was who? John the, John the Baptist. By the way, did you know 
if you follow the uh, accuracy of the Bible, did you know that John the Baptist was born on Passover? A Jewish Passover. Six months later, right on the nose, according to the Bible, it was Rosh Hashanah. No, our Lord was not born on December 25th. That's a pagan celebration. No, no, no. He was born on Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the Jewish year. Rosh means the head or the first, and Shana, year, the first of the year. It's when all the shofars are blown. Well, praise the Lord. They didn't even know what they were <coughs> celebrating, and yet the Messiah was born on Rosh Hashanah, which is usually in September, not December. If you want to know about that, because a lot of people are, they say, I don't know about that. Okay, go to my website, davidharking.org. That's all you need to do. And on the little thing up at the top says articles, click it on, and put in when was Yeshua or Jesus born. And you will have all the evidence you will need from history. Uh, history was a Ancient history was especially all the way through Rome was a, a sub subject and uh, pursuit of mine in college, which was back in the dark ages. As you <laughs> okay, you ready? Luke one. Then said Mary the angel, "How shall this be, seeing I know not a man?" And the angel said to her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The power of the highest will overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the what? The Son of God. The Son of God, not the Son of Mary. The Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. And what's the answer of the angel and Mary? For with God, how much is impossible? Nothing. Nothing is impossible. Number three, let's put it up there. Oh, yes. You talk about being able. Our Messiah was able to raise the dead. Amen. Did you know that the Bible teaches the Father raised him from the dead? In Ephesians 1. Did you know that the Son said... He raised himself from the dead in John 10. And did you know that the Holy Spirit raised him from the dead in Romans 8? In other words, all day, it was Easter. <laughs> Easter is another pagan word. Yes. That's the goddess of sex and fertility of ancient Babylon. We're not into bunnies and eggs. Amen. We're into the resurrection of the yes. Messiah. Amen. And our own resurrection, praise God. Amen. Let's put it up there. Yes, he came to Martha first, then Mary, according to John 11. And this was a serious problem. Lazarus was a friend of our Lord. And he was very ill, and he died. And his disciples were shaken up about it. Why, why did you wait so long? I mean, you could have been there and healed him of his sickness. He never said anything. We're going there. What for? He died. This is a great story. So he meets Martha, who's kind of the busy one of the two girls. Mm -hmm. And Martha goes out to see him. Said, Lord, have you only been here? My brother has not died. And what did Jesus say? Yeshua said, I am the resurrection and the life. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. Believest thou this? And she answered, I believe that you're the Messiah, the Son of God. And she ran and got Mary. Yeshua said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall what? Never, Never die. Never die. Yeah. Believest thou this? She said, Yes, Lord. I believe that thou art the Messiah, the Son of God, which should come into the world. Praise the Lord. Yeah. But here's two stories that you should put together. In Hebrews 11, 
it's talking about the birth of Isaac. And it says, accounting that God was what? Able. Able, there it is again, to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a what? In a figure. In other words, it's a type. It's a type of what God was going to do for all of us who put our faith in the Messiah. Wow, what a, what a marvelous story. Next. Number four. He is able to meet our needs. Yes. Do you believe that? <coughs> well, he's able, people say, but he never does anything for me. <laughs> really? I know. Hmm. Wow. He's able to meet our What? Yeah. Able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. You know that God wants to use you more than you want to be used? Amen. People say, oh, I, you know, I don't talk very well. Hey, Moses said that. <laughs> That's an old story. And God said, I'll be here with your mouth. And he said, oh, I am really not trained well. That was a lie. Acts 7.22 says he was well trained in all the Egyptian tongue. So God got a little ticked. That's my translation. <laughs> From the Greek word tiketo. Anyway, that's not true. There is no Greek word. But anyway, God is very upset with this <laughs> He said, who made man's mouth? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, I have my brother Aaron here. God said, good. When you go into Pharaoh, he's going to talk, and you're not. Can you imagine the embarrassment of the greatest leaders the world has ever seen, Moses? And while he's in Pharaoh, he turns to Aaron and says, Tell him, let my people go. Aaron said, let my people go. <laughs> How embarrassing for the greatest leaders. In fact, Pharaoh's daughter was grooming him to be head of all Egypt. You see, God can do whatever he wants to with any one of us. Amen? Amen. Oh, yeah. He can take a guy in a truck in 1987. And save his rotten soul. <laughs> Philippians 4.19, my God shall supply, well, a few things. What does it say? All your need, according to his what? God's not broke. According to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, by Messiah Yeshua. Wow. We better get straightened out. God is able to meet all of our needs. Yes. Then what is the problem? Yes. The problem is just what Romans says about Abraham. You don't really believe it, do you? Amen. Yeah. Too many of us are speaking out of two sides of our mouth. <clears throat> With our friends, we might say, yeah, God meets all your needs, but, you know... He's never met mine. Well, God's able. Amen? Yeah. And he will use you even when you don't think you can be used. How many of you have lived close to death by illness or accident or something else? We heard about one that was shot today. Listen, you're looking at somebody who at least three times, if not more, was ready to go home to be with the Lord. I didn't think I was going to get naked. You're also looking at somebody who is a preacher and a loudmouth, <laughs> and I got cancer of the throat. I couldn't talk for over a year. I was in terrible pain, getting morphine shots. And the physician said, even if we can straighten this out, you won't be a bass anymore. You'll probably be a high tenor. Oh, great. <laughs> I was 
so discouraged. But then I read in James 5 that if anybody's sick, and the word is hostanos, meaning no help at all, nothing's working. Doctors, medicines, not working. It says, call for the elders of the church and let them pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Well, I still remember the day. I was still in bed. I'd been there for a year. The pain was terrible. I was screaming a lot of the time. But when those men came in, they had their little bottle of oil to anoint me. Now it's time to say, do you believe that God can heal you? When everybody told me I wouldn't be healed, of cancer in the throat. They left that day and all I did is cry all day. But the next day when I woke up, all of a sudden I could talk. Mm. Which my family wasn't sure they wanted. <laughs> and anyway, listen, time after time, when I got malaria for preaching in Africa, the worst case of the malaria they said they'd never seen. I went into a coma for five weeks. You're not going to pull out of this, really? Hmm. But God had other things in mind. Amen. That's right. After I got well from that, I went to England to preach, and I caught a E. coli. There are 2,000 men my age that are already dead from it. And I haven't even told you about other experiences that I know God has a purpose. Just a couple prophecy conferences ago, this man came up to me and he said, what's it like to be a son of David Hawking? <laughs> you know the guy that's on the radio. I said, that's me. He said, no, it's not. He died several years ago. I said, no, it, it really is me. By the way, there are seven David Hawkings in America. And one of them did die. And I had to go on the radio and say, reports of my death are greatly exaggerated. <laughs> I'm still alive. And sometimes in the quietness of my own heart late at night, I start thinking about it. Why am I still here? Listen, God can use anybody. Mm -hmm. He used little kids to praise his name. Amen. You asked the people praising me to stop, said our Lord Yeshua on that Palm Sunday road. He said, if they stop, the rocks will cry out. Yeah. If you've ever been there, you know what I'm talking about. When you come down that Palm Sunday Road, to your left is the giant Orthodox Cemetery. Caskets are above ground, and there's nobody in them. They bury them underneath them. But on the top, they have a ledge. And on the top, they don't put flowers. The Jewish people put rocks, because the Bible says the Lord is my rock and my salvation. Amen. Our Lord, right there, said... I'll make the rocks cry out if you try to stop these people from praising me. Look, folks, we're talking about the God of the impossible. Yes. Story. And he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask. Let's go to the next one. God is able. That's just a little reminder. Next, put it up there. Ah, he is able, number five, to subdue all things unto himself. Now the pastor wanted me to say something about what's going on in the world politically and militarily. Okay? Oh Everybody is hot on Ezekiel 38 and 39 or Psalm 83 today. They're all asking about it. You see, what happened was just two and a half weeks ago, Edrogen of Turkey invited 67 Muslim leaders, challenging them to build the greatest army the world has ever seen and attack Israel and wipe it off the face of the earth once and for all. Several people really panicked over that. I thought to myself, bring it on. 
<laughs> the Messiah of Israel is coming, Amen. and he's going to defend Israel, and he's going to slaughter all nations who tried to hurt Yes, him. he will. A week later, <coughs> Valimar Putin decided that he and the head of Iran, Rouhani, and Edrigen, Turkey, Iran, and Russia, will form a lasting alliance in order to, and he said it, I couldn't believe he said it, to deal with the United States and its support of the nation of Israel that has to go. Wow. And once again, everybody called everybody's radio broadcast and every pastor they could find to find out what's going on. I don't know, folks. It may be that there's going to be a major conflict that is spoken of in the Bible. It's possible. Very possible. So Putin, to scare Americans a little bit, shot off a missile, not at one that was empty. He shot one that was nuclear. Now, he knew how to stop it, which he did, thank the Lord. But he told President Trump, we have many of those, and we can send them all at once, and you can't stop them all. I don't know what's going on, but he does. Yes. And see, I read the news out of the Bible. That's the only accurate place there is. Amen. So I'm not worried about this at all. He's able to subdue all things unto himself. Did you know that Revelation 11 says that one day all the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdom of our Lord and his Messiah yes. and he shall reign forever and ever. Amen. 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 Feel freedom. Bust out with hallelujah or praise hallelujah or whatever your thing is. <laughs> the Lord is listening. Let's let him know that we believe him. Hallelujah. Yeah. Believe him. hallelujah. Philippians 3. Put it up there. Our conversation is in heaven. How true. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, which is Jesus Christ in English. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is what? Able. Able even to subdue all things unto himself. What a Lord we have. Amen. 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 Let's put number seven up there. Six. six. Number seven. That's six. Are we six. We're six. Wow, this is a special one. <laughs> he is what? Able. Able to keep that which we committed unto him. Wow. This is very interesting. Turn to 2 Timothy. Put it up there on the screen. 2 Timothy, the next slide. 1, 12. After God keeps his promises. Now another slide. Nope, back it up. I'll read it to you. For the which cause I also suffer these things, Paul said to Timothy. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know who I am. I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hmm. Uh, by the way, only God saves you. You don't save yourself. Yes. Only God can save you. And the Bible says not one single thing, creature or event, could ever separate us from the love of God, which is in Messiah Yeshua, Christ Jesus our Lord. Wow. What I've done is commit my life and my future to Him. Amen. So I'm not worried anymore. Because He's able to keep that which I've committed unto Him against that day. Amen. Amen. Now number seven. He is what? Able. Able to save and to destroy. In James 4.12, there's one lawgiver who is able to save and destroy. Who art thou that judgest another? 
Here's a little warning message to all of us who say we believe in the Lord. Well, if you do, let him take care of things. Because sometimes we get tipped from the Greek word that doesn't exist to cut. <laughs> and sometimes we're really mad. And we don't like what people are doing to us. Amen? Amen. We talk about it all the time. In travel, we go to certain cities and the traffic is terrible. I thought it was terrible here. They blocked off North 15 this morning. We couldn't get on it. But we got here. So the Lord is good. Amen? Amen. But the fact is, life is filled with this stuff. One thing after another. But <laughs> my Lord is able to save and he's able to destroy. So why don't we just put things in his hands? Amen? Amen. That's hard to do sometimes, depending on what's going on in your life. Wow. How about number eight? Are we ready for that? I love this. He is what? Able. Able to do what? Comfort us. To comfort us in the midst of our trials. You know, uh, I've been a pastor for a lot of years. I was thinking uh, the first time I preached a message was at the San Pedro Mission to a bunch of alcoholics and drug addicts. And when I gave the invitation, one of those drunks came forward and said he wanted to be saved. So I, best I could, led him to the Lord. Well, he's a pastor today. You see, God can reach down to the real down and outers and grab a hold of a heart and change them. Yes. My wife and I currently attend Calvary Chapel in Testa. The pastor is very staggered. Stagger. He was a drunk for 30 years. God got a hold of his heart and saved him. He's now one of the best Bible teachers I've heard in a long time. Mm. God is able to do this. Hallelujah. He can comfort us in all our trials. Amen. 2 Corinthians. This is a wonderful verse. The God of all comfort. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Yeshua, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort who comforts us in all of our tribulation, that may, we may be able to comfort them that are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of the Messiah, Christ, abound in us, some of us have more than others, so our consolation also abounded by Messiah. Whether we be afflicted, it's for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so shall you be also of the consolation. Hmm. Paul in 2 Corinthians 12 said that when we suffer, really suffer, that those afflictions will actually lead to the power of the Messiah resting upon us. Wow. God teaches us more through suffering than when everything's going on. He's able to comfort us in the midst of our trials. <clears throat> and then there's this passage. Put it back up here. The next one is a, yeah, Hebrews 2, 17 and 18. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them, that's the word comfort, comfort them that are in any test 
and temptation. Listen, friends. God wants to comfort you more than you want to receive it. Yes, he does. And you and I both know that we really need it. Yes. Life is filled with many trials. But God wants to comfort us. Amen. And there's nothing like the comfort of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. A few years ago, I was exhausted at a prophecy conference. And an elderly lady who was 95 years old, on a cane, out of a wheelchair, came up front. And she said to me, you are really tired. I looked at her and said, well, no, you don't look that spry yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and I immediately fell in love with this dear old lady. And she said, I just wanted to come up here and it wasn't easy. I walked up here out of my wheelchair and I don't do that much. But she said, I want to tell you that God's able to comfort you even when you're tired and you're worn out and you don't feel you can go on another day. Thank God Amen. for ladies in their 90s. Amen? Amen? Wow, that was a blessing if I ever saw one. Well, let's go to number nine. Put it up there. All right, almost done. Number nine. He is what? Able. Able. This is from Jude 24. To keep us from what? Falling. Oh, from falling. The verse Jude 24 says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Some people say it's referring to our joy that we got rescued by God. I don't think so. I think it's his joy. Why? In Zephaniah 3, in relation to Israel, the Bible says to rejoice in the Lord, and it says that he, he loves you so much. He wants to bless you so much. It says he's going to sing over you. Did you know that God sings? And I'm sure it's on key. <laughs> what a blessing that is. He's able to keep you from falling. I need to trust the Lord, and so do you. Here's one last one, number 10. He is what? Amen. Able to save all that come to God through Yeshua HaMashiach, or Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Lord. Put it up there, Hebrews 7. Next, this is a great text. But this man, talking about the Messiah, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Hallelujah. My God's able to save no matter who you are. A lot of people say, oh, he'll never get saved. That's probably the one God's going to get. Amen. How many of you know that when God got you, it was not easy? <laughs> That's right. And the rest of you are lying. <laughs> no, God is powerful. He is able. Amen. 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 Aren't you glad of that? Yes. Join me in a word of prayer. Father, you know how easy it is for us not to trust you, to think that we need to handle things ourselves. We need to be delivered from all that self-righteousness. Help us, Lord, to come with a dependent heart, a humble life, asking you to do what only you can do. I don't know the hearts of people here, but you do, Lord. You know how many are here and are not even sure that they're rightly related to yes. the Messiah. So easy to just go along with things because of family or friends. But Lord, I pray right now by your Holy Spirit, you might move upon all of our hearts and those who are not sure. 
But they'll remember man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. God knows us better than we know ourselves. With your heads bowed and eyes closed, please don't look around. Just maintain privacy for everyone. But if in your heart you know that you need to settle your relationship with the Lord, something's not right. Right where you are, I'm going to ask you to do a simple thing. Just lift your hand up to the Lord right now. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. God loves you. The Bible says it over and over again. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Thank you, Jesus. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yes. It's Lord. not you saving yourself or trying to turn over another leaf or be a good person for a while. That isn't it. It's trusting what the Lord has already done. When he died on that cross, he paid for all sin. That's what the Bible says. You can be forgiven. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes. God, would you help these folks to put their trust only in you? So right now, just open their hearts to the Lord and say, Lord, I need to settle this in my heart right now. And we thank you and praise you. In the blessed name of our Lord Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. If you really want some help, wow. Mary, I'm leaving a note. <laughs> thank you. I even mixed the pages up so you have to figure them out. They're not numbered. I'll go by the points. Yeah. <laughs> but if you would like some help, at our book table out there, uh, we have a little booklet called Who is the Messiah? Oh, We'd love to give it to you. So uh, just as you go out, you can just say, could I have one of those books on the Messiah? And we'll be glad to give it to you. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm going to get down here. Again, this is a very strange booklet. <laughs> <laughs> it's short. It's with Here small, we go. With okay. Feet. Oh! You know, if he'll reward you for a cup of water in his name, maybe he'll reward you for this help. <laughs> God bless you all. Thank you. God bless you. Wow. That was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah. I think we got the point out of here, right? Let's, yes. let's, let's pray for Pastor Hockey, your dear brother. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the work that we've done this morning, Lord, in the hearts of your people, Lord. Thank you for our brother, for your hockey, Lord. Yes, Lord. Man of God, for your anointed. It's such a gift, Lord. We pray your blessings to be upon him. You keep him safe. And, Lord, that there would be no more experiences of near death, Lord, but that you bring health and strength to him, Lord that he may continue to preach the gospel message, Father, to this dying world. Lord. We pray wherever you take him, wherever you lead him, wherever you guide him, Father, your spirit would be there. Lord. And we thank you for bringing him here. We're honored by it, Lord. And may we be doers of the word and not just hearers only, Lord. Let's take this back and let's apply it to our lives. Lord, we pray you bless the food that we're about to partake of out there, Lord. Pray that you bless those that will be purchasing the books, Father, out there on various subjects or go to his website and check out uh, the other books that are there, Father, and just be blessed by them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us.
I was only like six years old, and I can remember we had a little church. It was a little bigger than this one. But it was small. It was just a community church out here. It was about three years I would cry if I couldn't go to Sunday school on Sunday morning when I was little, or if I was sick. You know, I mean, I could be sick and dying all day, and I was like, I got to go. And it was so funny, so it was very easy back then. <laughs> I was born old. I, was, I didn't have to do all the things that you did to make, you know, to make yourself feel like you needed to get saved. I was just born old. I didn't have to do all the stuff that you need to do to make sure they do, you know, have to be able to do straight down later. Right. You know, um, that's why I just attribute to my life. You know, I'm not a It was very nice. gymnasium in the children's classroom. Yeah, I heard. He's averaging over 8,000 children on Sunday morning for his service. It's a nightmare. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> it's not one I want. Yeah. <laughs> hey, amen. Grab <laughs> home. Yeah. There we go. All right. Yeah. Okay. Whoop. 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 There we go. Thank you. 